Well, yeah, I mean, <laughs> they are. They, I mean, it, well, the the power that is exerted by by the financial interests is just overwhelming. It overwhelms Congress. It overwhelms the uh, the Republican and Democratic administrations uh, in these last decades. And essentially, they can get whatever they want. And I I I don't think of it. You know, in my own mind, as a conspiracy, I think of it as this is the way these guys were just trying to make money, and they were trying to make money and uh, as best they could in a situation uh, that was uh, different than what it had been before. And so they were, they created this, as I mentioned before, this this giant casino where you could bet on everything. But the question about, about how to get out of it is is not all that clear to me. I, I think the issue that was just raised, I'm sorry, I've forgotten uh, the person's name. Bob Chapman. Just before me. What Bob, was that? Bob Chapman. Bob. Uh, I think he's right about this issue of, uh, of tariffs. Uh, I think that uh, if, there, uh, if we don't essentially abrogate the WTO uh, regulations and uh, put in uh, some reasonable tariffs, uh, for imports, which means other countries are going to do it for our exports also. I mean, this is, the, the, of course, this is the nightmare of these uh, financial, well, of, of the capitalist class, I would say, in general. But I don't see how you how you build up an industry again, or or uh, or, or expand our industry, unless there's some protection against uh, imports from uh, you know from uh, uh, countries that have very very low cost of production because mm -hmm. of the Labor uh, situation. Uh, they don't have the protections for labor and the and the pay and the environmental protections either. So they have very low costs of production. So I don't see how you protect you know American production from that if if that is a goal. So in the absence of that, uh, I'm not sure how you get out of this. Well, because, and, you know. because it's all been based, as I said before, on this expansion of debt, and uh, that is coming crashing down at this time. Well, and, and uh, the people who listen to this program have heard me say this before. You know, I, I am a protectionist to the point that we protect our own markets, our own jobs here in this country. We're still running massive deficits. And as you pointed out, Fred, they don't have the same standards. They're able to produce whatever. And I have no problem with a corporation, American corporation, opening up subsidiaries in whatever developing nation. That's fine. But what they should not be allowed to do is to produce those goods and ship them back into this market to compete with people that are still here producing the same products or services. They shouldn't be allowed to do this. And, and if they are allowed to do that, there should be tariffs on these products coming back in so it balances this out. And, and what the grand plan here is to drive the wage scale, because we're so wasteful here in this country, uh, to drive the wage, uh, wage scale down. But, you know, that makes the existing corporations very happy because we all know the... ...has been to take a second job, to go into debt. I mean, this is one of the reasons why people have been using their homes like ATM machines mm -hmm. and the credit card debt and everything, um, because their salaries weren't going up uh, when, again, as corrected for inflation. And part of the reason that they weren't going up was that was were the goods coming in from abroad. Part of the reason was just the, the lack of strength of, of workers that is because of, uh, you know, the unions have lost whatever strengths they, they've had, the, the, the Automobile Workers Union, which used to be so strong, of course, now is in a position of, you know, uh, handing back uh, whatever they feel they need to in order to try to keep a few jobs um, in the U.S. So, so I, I think that, that that's really, uh, you know, the, the, this has already, this, this globalization uh, scheme, if you will, has already had a, a detrimental effect on the income of, of people in the United States. I'm going to, uh, uh, what I'm going to do is... The illegal alien problem, and there's 30 million of them in the United States, and they're forced, because they're illegal, to work for less, which also pushes wages down. And so you kind of, the, the wage oh. earner has had a double whammy, and so the people who left the automobile and other manufacturing companies that were making $30 an hour are now making 10 to $15 an hour. So there's been a tremendous uh, adjustment uh, in the lifestyle of people in America, and it's going to get an awful lot worse. 
we haven't seen anything yet. Uh, as John knows, I called for depression at the beginning of the February of this year, and we're in it. It's going to be hyperinflationary. And then I think, finally, when the people behind the scenes who have caused all this, and I believe it's been done deliberately, then when they're ready to pull the plug and give us a deflationary depression in World War III, all at the same time, uh, they're going to do it. Guy, I just have a, a couple of comments. One on the on the issue of the um, you know the, of the illegal, uh, the undocumented workers here. You know, one of the group that has increased so dramatically, of course, have been the Mexicans. But part of the reason for that has been NAFTA, because we essentially eliminated the jobs of a, of a million uh, uh, corn growing uh, farmers or peasants in in uh, in Mexico. And, uh, and NAFTA didn't create uh, that number of jobs in Mexico. And so you have, uh, you know, part of the increase in the numbers of Mexicans coming here looking for jobs has been because of uh, of this bilateral, well, no, let's look at it also, it's a trilateral uh, trade agreement. Uh, and uh, so, uh, I mean, that's, that's, that's part of the story. The, the other thing about the issue of, of you mentioned the Depression, I, I wouldn't be surprised if we, we if we, are in one or on our way into one. But the official rate of, of unemployment in the United States is 8.5%. But when you add in the people who have stopped looking for jobs uh, and they're not considered to be unemployed, and you add in the people who are just working one or a few hours a week and they're not considered to be unemployed even though they want full-time jobs, we have an unemployment rate of 16% or more at the moment. Uh, so uh, this is uh, this is getting you know to to levels uh, similar to to what they were back in the um, back in the 1930s. All right, we've got to take this break, Mr. Madoff. I, you know, I want to talk about Madoff in the next hour. I'm not going to uh, for the remaining few minutes we have here uh, with Mr. Uh, Fred Magdoff. The book, The Great Financial Crisis: Cause and Con- Consequences, uh, unintended. Mm. Don't think so. We'll take this break, spend a few more minutes with our special guest. We'll be right back. We just have Mr. Magdoff for a couple more minutes here, co-authored the book, The Great Financial Crisis, Cause and Consequence, along with John Bellamy Foster. Uh, any parting shots, Fred, for our audience here in a few remaining minutes? Well, not really. I mean, this is... Uh... You know, this is really serious stuff. I don't know how else to say it. You know, the stock market goes up uh, a couple hundred points, and everybody thinks uh, it, it, <laughs> the problem's over. And, uh, and of course, that they head down. Uh, this is going to be with us for years to come. And uh, even if it was to the official recession or depression was to end in a year or two, uh, the uh, the consequence would be with us for years, and and my guess is that uh, that we will be in very slow or negative growth for quite a few years, and uh, so uh, these are going to be difficult times for people. And uh, what we haven't really talked about, and I, I think is important, has been you know the effect on just the, the regular folk, on, on just real people, and uh, so much of the attention that's been given in the uh, you know in the by Congress and by the president and the previous president uh, has been uh, dealing uh, essentially trying to uh, keep <laughs> keep as many wealthy people wealthy as possible and and uh, and they always uh, you know the average uh, person and the average worker and uh, and this I mean th- there have been some things and uh, one of them has been uh, the, uh, you know, they've extended the unemployment the benefits, but those are starting to run out for people, and uh, and they've extended uh, the food stamp program. So, uh, but uh, but the, the the people seeking assistance at food shelves, the people seeking housing because they've lost their uh, their homes, uh, these numbers have just gone up dramatically, and they've gone up, you know, way past uh, the ability of many of the private um, charities to deal with. So uh, this is uh, this is a humanitarian crisis in the United States, and of course, uh, in in many other countries, it, it may very well be a lot worse. Well, I, I expect it is, um, but I think that 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 those issues need to really start getting brought to the forefront. And I was struck by there was a, an interview with a fellow who was on the uh, 
news. Uh, this is when the G20 was meeting in, in London, um, and there were riots, and uh, uh, they, <laughs> a group broke into the Bank of Scotland, the Royal Bank of Scotland, and there was a fellow outside who wasn't involved in it at all, but he was clearly one of the demonstrators, and he said, look, we got the police here to defend the Royal Bank of Scotland. He said, but where are the police to defend the people when they're thrown out of their homes? And, 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 that, and, and that is uh, true. Yeah, and I, I, all I could say to myself is <laughs> that is a very good question. Well, a couple of quotes of the people that were around during the last Great Depression, and I think this one is going to be, uh, they're going to have to revamp the history books. This is going to be the greater of the Great Depressions.